I've gone through many umbrellas over the years, so much so that I think of umbrellas as a consumable. This project attempts to put to rest the consumable label I've given umbrellas. Today, I'm going to build what I consider the indestructible umbrella, or the uberbrella. Stay tuned. So here I have most of what I need for this umbrella project. The only thing missing is the canopy, which I still haven't made a definite decision on yet, but that shouldn't keep us from getting started. I'm going to start out prepping each piece individually before combining them to build the umbrella. So let's get started. The pole is the central piece of the umbrella that provides a frame for attaching everything to. Straight from Home Depot, the PVC I'm using is sold as a 24 inch pre-cut piece. So nothing more to do here. The runner is the piece that slides up and down the pole to open and close the umbrella. For this, I'm using the appropriate sized coupler that fits the PVC pole. Using a drill with a grinding bit, grind down the raised portion inside the coupler. This should allow the coupler to slide up and down the length of the pole. Grind till it fits over the pole and slides easily without rattling. Mounted to my drill, I'm turning the dowel and sanding off some of that diameter till it slides into the CPVC easily. I also cut the dowel up into short pieces about 1 inch long. The ribs are the pieces that attach to the umbrella canopy. They provide rigidity to the canopy when it's opened. Cut 8 22 inch C PVC pieces. Insert a piece of dowel into the end of the rib, lining up both ends. Screw the dowel in place through the rib about 3 quarter inch from the end. The stretchers are connected to the runner and ribs. For each rib there is a stretcher. Their main purpose is to lift and lower the ribs when sliding the runner up or down the pole. The stretchers can also provide support to the ribs. Cut 4 11 inch CPVC pieces. Now cut the CPVC down the middle to create two identical halves. One eighth inch from each end of the stretcher, drill a one quarter inch hole. These holes will serve as the other end of the hinge for the stretcher's connection to the runner and the rib. The canopy provides shelter from the elements, usually made of a soft, lightweight fabric and coated to help it prevent liquid penetration. More than likely, I'll use tarp for my canopy. To prep the hinges, get 24 pairs of eyelet screws. For each pair of screws, bend open one of the eyelets just enough so it can be inserted into the other eyelet. I now have these sets of eyelet screws, which I'll use as hinges. Another preparatory step is marking where the hinges will screw into the upper cap. Also, copy these marks onto one end of the runner. Draw a line around the cap about one half inch away from the rim. This serves as a guide where to drill. Extend the eight markings from the rim up till they intersect with this line. 
Press the cap back onto the pole securely. At each intersect mark on the cap, drill a pilot hole through the cap and the pole. For each pair of eyelet screws, screw the unbent eyelet into each pilot hole in the cap. At the end of the rib with the dowel, drill a pilot hole for the eyelet screws in the center of the dowel. Now screw the bent eyelet into this hole. Connect the eyelet screws together to create the hinge between the pole and the ribs. Now you can start to see an umbrella taking shape within all this PVC. For the runner, because it's too thin to screw the eyelet into and still have it slide up and down the pole, I added this expansion piece to give it just enough mass to hold the full length of the eyelet screw. Because these are large eyelet screws, I did have to cut them a bit shorter. This allows more of the thicker part of the thread to screw into the PVC. Transfer the markings you made earlier on the runner onto the expansion piece. Then draw a line around the expansion piece about one half inch above the edge that was pressed over the runner. Push the runner as far into the expansion piece as it will go, then where the lines intersect, drill pilot holes through the expansion piece and the runner to fit the eyelet screws. Screw the unbent eyelet into each expansion and runner pilot hole. Be sure the eyelet does not screw through the inner wall of the runner, which would prevent the runner from sliding up and down the pole. If it does, either back out the eyelet or grind it down from inside the runner. As you can see, I've already bent open the eyelet screws. Hook the stretcher onto the runner eyelet, situated so that the concave of the stretcher will be facing away from the pole, then bend the eyelet back to its closed position. I don't have a measurement of where the stretcher connects to the rib, but some initial trial and error has told me I need to cut off about an inch from the length of my current stretcher. The stretchers are now the right length, so I can mark where they'll connect to the rib. Drill a pilot hole to fit the eyelet screw. Drill the hole from the bottom of the rib all the way through the top also. Screw the eyelet all the way through both walls of the rib. Position the eyelet so it's perpendicular to the length of the rib. Because the stretcher can't be positioned to attach to a bent open eyelet, I'm going to zip tie it to the rib eyelet. When tightening the zip tie, leave it slightly loose to allow movement as a hinge. Also, for these screws sticking out of the ribs, you can either cut them off or cover them. For ease of construction, I'm going to cover them with glue. Okay, I ran into a roadblock. 
My idea for a hinge using the eyelet screws needed some redesign. It previously swung in multiple directions which didn't work so well for the ribs, so I created a new design. The dowel went into the same end of the rib, but this time I added a cap over the dowel. The plastic cap will give the threads of the eyelet screw something better to screw into. The difference with the eyelet screw this time was not needing to bend it open to connect it as a hinge. I drilled a pilot hole through the cap and into the dowel, then screwed in the unbent eyelet screw. One thing I did forget was to hold the cap in place with the screw. When adding this screw, either before or after screwing in the eyelet, be sure to screw it in a little off-centered so it won't hit the eyelet screw. Now, the reason I didn't have to bend open the eyelet screw is because the redesign of my hinge is now held in place by a hex head bolt. By clamping the two eyelets together with the bolt through the eyelet, the new hinge will only pivot in a straight line, which now works well for my umbrella. To keep the nut from coming loose, I'm using Loctite Red. The nut only needs to be hand tightened until the eyelets are touching each other and still able to pivot easily. I usually wait a day to be sure the Loctite has dried completely. This is what we have so far, and it's starting to look and work like an umbrella. Something that needs fixing is the runner. The runner can turn around on the pole, but I later found I have to prevent this from occurring. What I'll do to keep it from rotating is first remove it from the stretcher, which means cutting these zip ties off. I drew a straight line along the length of the pole, which is where I'll cut a slot that will keep the runner sliding in a straight line. I'm using this DIY angle cutter I made from a nut, bolt, and Makita 4 inch blade. The slot I'm cutting doesn't need to be very wide, and the less you cut away, the better. I also used a drill bit to smooth and widen the slot a little more. With the runner on the pole, align one of the stretchers with one of the ribs, then draw a line where the slot meets the runner, extending the line into where you will drill a pilot hole. Drill the pilot hole about 1 inch in from the edge of the runner, then screw into the pilot hole, something that will protrude out of the runner and into the slot, preventing the runner from rotating around the pole. This video ends here. I think at this point you get the idea of the construction of the Uberbrella and the different ways the separate pieces can be attached together. The reason I'm stopping here is because the only piece left for the Uberbrella is the canopy, which can be a project in itself. The tarp I mentioned at the start of this video is still going to be my first canopy, but it'll be something I learn from in terms of how it'll attach to the Uberbrella and also what kinds of problems I encounter in that process. What I'm hoping for is to find a way to use metal as a canopy. This is Uberbrella, and I want to project that image at first glance. I got the idea to use metal after watching some videos on engineers who design solar arrays. They create these very compact packages that are rocketed into space, at which point it unfolds into a massive panel used to capture as much sunlight as possible. If I can design something similar that will unfold into the canopy, You'll see that in another video. Have fun constructing and maybe modifying this umbrella project into your own version of an Uberbrella. That's all I have for now, and I'll catch you in the next video.